Good morning to everyone and thank you for joining us for our morning worship and prayer. Today we have the pleasure of hearing from one of the most favorite and beloved professor in Every Nation Seminary and also my personal favorite, Dr. Elaine Bernius. She is a professor of biblical studies and she does not only teach in Every Nation Seminary, she also teaches in Indiana Wesley. And so today, let's ready our hearts to receive from her. Let me read from Psalms 92 as we uh, worship the Lord. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. Father, today we come before you, worshiping, thanking you, for it is good to indeed lift your name up, whether that be morning or evening. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our lives are blessed. 
My name is Dr. Elaine Bernius. I have the amazing privilege of getting to teach Old Testament at Every Nation Seminary. And I welcome you this morning to morning worship and prayer. Today we're going to look at the feeding of the 5,000. It's the only miracle that Jesus performs that is recorded in all four Gospels. And this morning we're going to look at Matthew's recording of this, um, of this miracle in Matthew chapter 14, starting at verse 13. Let us read the word of the Lord together. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw the large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men besides women and children. So we see here that this passage begins with when Jesus heard what had happened. And so what had happened, if we go back to the beginning of this chapter, was that Herod the Tetrarch, also known as Herod Antipas, one of the sons of Herod the Great, he is now the ruler of Galilee and Perea, he has just finally murdered John the Baptist. So he had Um, been afraid of the crowds for a long time, but finally he, he has done that and Jesus hears this. And of course, um, he's in great pain. Um, this is his beloved cousin, likely someone he ministered with. Um, definitely we know the story of his baptism by his cousin John in the Jordan River. Um, and we also know that this is in the transition point when Jesus' ministry begins to shift near his last year of ministry Um, to a much more teaching-focused ministry for his disciples, um, possibly as this kind of persecution is ramping up. And so Jesus draws away in his pain, and yet the crowds follow him. And when he sees them, we see in verse 14, he has compassion on them. In his pain, 
he saw their pain. Compassion actually is an English word that means to suffer with, to suffer alongside. And it's a word that is commonly used in the, in the Gospels, actually most often used in the Gospels about Jesus. Now, interestingly, Jesus himself uses the word to describe two characters in his parables. The Good Samaritan, who suffers with the dying man, has compassion on him. And then the father of the prodigal son, the father of the lost son, who suffers with his son, he has compassion on him, and he draws him back. So Jesus, in his pain, sees their pain, and he heals their sick. We often skip over that part. This is the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. And yet, Jesus heals multiple people. I like to define the idea of miracle as God putting right what is wrong in the world. As surely as sin brought death to God's good creation, Jesus is bringing life from death. And he heals the broken, decaying, dying bodies that he sees before him. And then the disciples, of course, um, bring him the very practical problem um, that these people need to eat, and so they ask him to send them away. But Jesus gives them a command. It's a command word when he says, you, give them something to eat. Of course, they only have a meager amount that is nothing in the face of what is before them. And so what does Jesus do? He says, bring what you have to me. I'd like to have us think today that when Jesus gives us a command that we are unable to fulfill, a command like, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect, or a command like, go and make disciples of all the nations. When he gives us that kind of command, that is his invitation to us to bring him all that we have and let him do the miracle. Bringing him all that we have. And when we do that, let us not fail to overlook even the smallest resource that we may have in our hand and offer it to the Almighty God and see what he can do. And what can he do, right? This is what, what follows here as Jesus organizes the people and then he gives, th gives thanks and breaks the loaves and gives them to the disciples. By the way, that idea of giving thanks and breaking the bread and giving. We see that played out again in the Last Supper. We see that played out again with the men on the road to Emmaus after they've come to the house. It's in Jesus giving thanks and breaking the bread and giving it to them that they finally recognize him as Jesus. And I wonder in that moment, are they recognizing the Last Supper moment or are they recognizing this moment? Were those men perhaps present here at this moment. Um, but in Jesus' hands, those loaves and fish multiply. But I love the fact that he gives it back to the disciples and lets them give it to the people. Can you imagine their experience of that miracle happening in their hands as they pass out those loaves and fish to the people? And then, of course, um, they call, everyone eats. Everyone eats. They all eat and are satisfied. They don't just get a snack. They are satisfied. And then what is taken up are 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. That term there, left over, could be translated um, the broken pieces in abundance, right? There is an abundance here. This is a miracle of abundance. Um, Jesus doesn't just provide. He, he almost literally overwhelms them. Now, when we start t talking about abundance, we can get a little nervous that it's starting to sound a little bit like prosperity gospel. But my friends, we serve a God of abundance. And I would say that this is a miracle of making all right that is broken. Because where do we see our God of abundance? We go to the garden 
And we see there that God says, eat of all the trees, every tree, any tree. We often um, um, emphasize the prohibition of the one tree and forget the extravagant abundance of all the trees from which we can eat. That's the God we serve. And then we continue to see that abundance um, in the bread that rains from heaven and never runs out to then the, the bread that, that stops once they are able to eat the abundance of the land that God's prov God provides for them, the land that is flowing with milk and honey, the vineyards and the orchards that they eat from that they did not plant, to the abundance of the new heaven and the new earth, which we read about in Revelation 22. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, um, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. His abundant provision is a putting right of what is broken in this world. We serve a God of ab abundance, so we pray boldly for abundant provision, overwhelming provision. But we trust not in the provision, but in the provider. And that is why we do not preach a prosperity gospel. We preach the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, our crucified, risen King and Lord. Let us worship him together now. My prayer for you today that you walk in the peace and in the rest of your abundant provider and I leave you with the words that close the scripture our, our written word but may you receive these as the words of the living word amen come Lord Jesus the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people, amen.